Yeah. That's how you would be like, oh, this dude is balling. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all like glad it's not getting extra, you know. <laughs> hey, it, like Kelly said, we got extra everything because it was like, hey, I expected to pay for my meal, uh, right? Or Joe, you know, me and Joe at least, but uh, I didn't expect for him to pay for all of our meals, you know, because you know how you know how people eat, people eat when they ain't got to pay yeah. for it. Nah, I was eating like I had to pay for it, so right to find out that he stuck Kelly with that bill, man, I was like, oh man. That, that's a different type of nigga, man. Sure. <laughs> he moved, I can see why he's not a part of your life right now. So at all. Yeah. You you know one of the things I do miss guys about that call, and we gotta we gotta figure out how to how to duplicate something like that again now. Is you y'all remember we used to learn so much from each other in that time yeah. period because each person had different wisdom, different nuggets, and different knowledge and Again, I think that's one of the things that that's one of the lost arts of friendship in today's climate is yeah. friends not necessarily spending time, quality time together, but learning things for one another instead of competing with one another about what they're doing. Like I am yeah. I am proud of each and every one of you guys. Like here's here's here's, here's the right. truth. Kelly was the person that initially helped me get on the best sellers list when I put my first book out and that was in 2010 and mm-hmm. to look at how how much Kelly has grown since that time period and he was telling yeah. me some stuff that he had even told you Ty and I was like this guy like I used to call like they call him the publisher now I mean he he likes to go by that name now but I called him the, the generator Ty you know generator. Why I, called I called Kelly the generator this guy always generates new ideas. And he thinks about things that you never thought about before, man. And he hits you with it. And he has that same baby face spirit he got now. He don't expect <laughs> anything back from you when he gives you stuff. He's just like, hey, here, man, go get that. That could be a multi-billion dollar idea. He don't even care. Yeah, yeah I gave you one the last time you called me randomly. I was like, yo, this is really why you came me. And it just dropped in my spirit. And I was like, yo. Do this, do this, do this, do this, and he was like, "Kill, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Yo," I was like, yeah. "Hey, bro, I, I don't know. That's why you called me. I don't, I don't know. It just comes like that. Yeah. It's just my gift. I love to give and I love to help people." Man, that's yeah, great. man, this dude is crazy, man. And you know, I, I always laugh the first time, man, that uh, I saw you. You know, I, I hit Moa. If I even met you, and I was like, I got I'm struggling with this book or whatever. And he was like, I got this guy. I remember thinking, like, this guy ain't gonna call me because let me back up. Because when I saw you, I'm so proud of you. Because I remember where we came from, what you've been through, yeah. with your yeah. mom, family, everything. And I was like, when I saw you on Twitter, I'm like this guy, you know, out here we heal, he doing big things out here, you know. So, so I was like, okay, great. And I remember he was like, you hit me up, we kind of bonded. We was like, okay, cool, you got somebody. I was like, this guy ain't gonna call because he ain't with Mo. <laughs> I'm the middle brother, so I'm kind of like, ain't the first, ain't the last. I'm in the middle, so I was like, he ain't gonna hit me back. So I called him up, you know. Then I think I think he uh he hit me back right away because he's doing something, and then he called me back. I'm like, oh, this dude. I remember man, I was, my wife I'm like, this dude calling me up for my phone, and I'm like, yo, this is him coming through. And he's like, man, I'm with my fans right now, but I'm gonna hit you. You know, I kill this. I'm gonna hit you back, bro. I hit you back in a minute. I'm, I'm like, in Walmart, man. I'm like, this dude in Walmart, this dude is he real. He in Walmart, so okay, cool. So then he hit me back, and that's how we all man, just do whatever. So, but you've been doing great things, man. Speaking right now, I've been seeing you out here doing stuff too. So it's like, it's just crazy how there's the greatness, but it has never been, and it never will be any jealousy from the standpoint of what we feel mm-hmm. grind. I use Kelly stuff. He gives me stuff I use it. You know, you know, I'm like, hey, because at the end of the day, I give him stuff. We give you stuff. That's that's the circle that's powerful that you can be running yeah. and doing things. You don't necessarily have to be like fighting. It's enough out here for everybody to eat. I know it's the cliche, yeah. but it's it's really true. Somebody said we messy. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that dude know who he is. He said his name. He better not call me. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh, I just heard that story the other week. He finally told me that story for the first time the other week. He was at the crib. And I was like, I, I rolled when he told me the story, the, the story behind No, I told him everything. Because I was like, yo, I ain't told y'all these stories. And then I told him and his wife they couldn't breathe, bro. 
Like that story is hilarious, dude. Like not even just that one story because there's many of I those. Told them all of them. I told him all of them when the, when the dude when the dude was at the park and he cussed them people out from the pulpit. Oh my goodness! Yeah, like I remember what you said, um, Finch. You was like. Why is it old B to B prosper? <laughs> you know, not a monster. <laughs> the metaphor was this Joker was getting booked for the speaking engagement every year and messed it up. The mother was like, "Kill! I'm trying to get out there and do this event." And he was like, "Why is it old B to B prosper? No modern monster." <laughs> oh goodness. And we, we say that now all the time when we talk. K- Kelly just uh, pop out with that statement, man. It's so yeah. crazy. Like, like, um, I think, uh, Ty, you in, you in the clubhouse, right? Yeah, you and Kelly both yeah. in the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was telling Kelly, I was in the clubhouse a couple months ago now, man, and uh, came across this guy that Kelly had brought out to do this event. Kelly did this event. Why wasn't Ty there at the, at the celebrity basketball event that you did? He, um... You had something going on, right, Ty? That's why you didn't come out? Yeah, and then I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be straight 100% fuck. I ain't had no money to get that. I was broke. <laughs> hey, hey, Ty, after the event, I was broke too. Hell, I lost 50 grand. And the niggas just like, what are you going to do now? And I was like, hell, y'all got paid. I lost money. Listen, that event was so... Here's the thing, right? Since we all we all the way fucking right. <laughs> I was broke too, <laughs> and it was quite because I had just came off a tour. I think my second tour or something like that. And people think I tell people this all the time. One of the greatest lessons I've learned about money because I used to always think, how can an athlete who has millions of dollars go broke? Right. Well, really? I know what it's like because when you get a large check, like I was getting like forty grand a month. Right, and you start spending money, but you don't have any new money coming in, just the money you, you got from mm-hmm. whatever you did. Your bills don't stop coming, other expenses don't stop coming. And for you, when you look up, you're like, Well, where did all my money go? And then you get to a point because you're not thinking about the future at that time, yeah. at least, at least I wouldn't. you like, mm-hmm. Hey, I don't have any new income coming in, but I still got outgoing expenses. And yeah. th- that's how you run out of money. You know, I don't I don't necessarily use the term broke, but in the sense of I didn't have the money to maneuver at the time. And so when Kelly paid me to come host that event, I was like, man, <laughs> I was happy. <laughs> you know, Kelly was like, hey, man, I got your flight, man. Got your hotel. And, and listen, for, the, for, you, for those people who don't know, when Kelly Cole put on the event, he puts on an event, man. He brought he out so many celebrities. And I, I would have known, had he not told me, had he not been my friend, that he lost so much money on that event. But you wouldn't have been able to tell at the You saw the empty arena, nigga. You was there. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, right? You got to think, Kelly. We're in your hometown. It's, it's, it's a small town. Even though this arena was big, it's still small. I I didn't know. We did an after party. Kelly took us out to eat out. Well, he didn't take everybody. It was me and uh, Bentley uh, <laughs> that, that we went. The three of us went out to eat. Yeah. And uh, you, I just would have never known based upon looking at the the way he he did that event, Ty. That he had lost so much money, yeah. and then that put that caused other stuff to happen. You know, and, and again, that's why I say when you start looking at friendship in the core of how we should operate as friends when we when we actually consider somebody our friend you know it's like yeah. i felt mm-hmm. so bad not knowing that my friend had covid and could have yep. died you know and when i talked to him he's like yeah man i'm just getting over it and i was like you getting over what dude like i had covid man and it was it was a two for me i was looking at him like Nigga, why you didn't tell me? But I looked at it like, hey, wait a minute. It's it's still your responsibility as a friend yeah. to be there for your friend. And you got to call and check up on your friend. You, you yeah. waiting on your friend to call you like Kelly is jet sitting all over the world. He's managing his son. He's doing all these things. 
He put now. I, I think I read in my notes that they gave me like three thousand books a day. I don't know. You know the numbers are the <laughs> it's out there. The numbers are through the roof. You know, but looking at, we never look at people's lives in its totality. We only look at the highlights and the snippets that we have. And so, I think being someone's friend is you being there for them, even when they don't ask you to, or even even if they don't necessarily need you to be there for you. You just been hey brother calling you checking up on you so i made a habit to to start doing that even more like hey kelly just calling up on you man checking up on you and ty after the show i'm gonna get your number call. so i can call you yes, i'll put it in chat i can't put it in chat no don't put it in <laughs> chat man don't do, don't do that. everybody have your number <laughs> everybody have your number then <laughs> but yeah um i i'll i'll inbox you so so we can exchange phone numbers um Sure. Because I'm not, I'm not gonna lose another year. Uh, and it wasn't just COVID. It's just the fact of, hey man, when you have sincere and genuine relationship, and this to anybody that's yeah. listening or watching right now, don't lose your relationship over some BS. Don't do right. it. Yeah. Don't do it. You, you gotta at some point humble yourself enough to say, you know what, man, I messed up. You know, and I'm, I'm saying this tonight, Ty, I messed up. I misjudged the situation. I took it out on on x amount of years of friendship all because i was immature at the time and this was this was many years ago i can't remember how what year that was that you actually came here but at the at the end of the day i'm sorry i love you and you my real friend i'm not throwing away 96 not doing it not doing it 96 bro my 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 bad too bro because i I was feeling some type of way i was heated i probably was the one responsible for ending the call (laughs) <laughs> Both of y'all cats stop showing up. I'm proud of y'all, though, man. Yeah, that's it. Where he go? I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> yeah, you went out. He went out. You got it. <laughs> but I'm Somebody... saying, man, I'm, I apologize too, bro. Oh man, make it right. Love. It's right. Yeah, it's right. It's definitely yeah. right. We coming to LA soon, man. They they begging for us to come out there and do a writers workshop. So we'll be out there soon. You gotta come out. Oh, come, out. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I'm I'm not coming out. I'm gonna be a part of it. Okay. Let's get that trip. Yes, <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna treat me like street booty killer go. You're not gonna do that to me. <laughs> you you want to be a I can't, we got I, you in there. I, Finch got to be out there. I want to be a part of the event itself. Like I see I you guys it. doing these events, and, and by the way, congratulations on your you guys' podcast. Tell people about your podcast because I watched a couple episodes, and I'm like, oh man, this guys look like they having a ball on that show. And it, the two of y'all personalities together, it works very well for for the show that you guys have. But yeah, I, I've seen a lot of the events you guys have done together over the years, and uh, you're right, Ty. I missed your event. Or whatever year that was, and uh, it, it was probably a financial thing why I didn't come, or or I could have been booked for something else. I, I don't remember, but at the end of the day, I love what you guys are doing, and the fact that that I think Ty said this earlier, nobody's looking to jock or co- uh, compete with each other. It's just like, hey, I love my brother. We doing business together, but the business part don't interfere with the friendship part, and the friendship part don't interfere with the business part. We just hanging out as family and yeah. doing what we love doing. So yeah, you got to t- tell people about your podcast. For sure, yeah, we got a podcast called Books and Brothers, um, where we talk about books, business, and um, bring on thought leader, thought leaders, and all types of authors and stuff like that, man. And we we created that just to share our knowledge and share our wisdom and what we enjoy, which is helping people get their stories out and um, share their story. So so yeah, Books and Brothers, we we release it. Um, I try to get them out on Thursday, so at least every Thursday um, there's a new episode coming out. So yeah, there's Books and Brothers, and then our writing workshops is um, the Book It Masterclass. So bookitmasterclass.com. Right now it is virtual, and um, we got one coming up on May the 8th, and people can register for that at bookitmasterclass.com. Our next live one will be in L.A., so stay tuned for that, hosted by my man Finch. And, um, me and uh, Doctor Reed gonna gonna shut it down, but we'll be in LA soon. And so, Ty, tell me about that that, that thing that's on your hat, man. Yeah, this this is actually the logo for the writing coach, 
And one of the things that, you know, go back to the publisher, AKA back in the day, generator, still generator. Um, he brought me, here's it, it something I was already doing like back in the day, like when I was doing ministry and stuff, I would always have, remember my youth with the five days, everything would be at, even Grace would have shirts and whatever. And I got yep. so caught up one day when I was talking to my bro. And he was like, hey bro, this year, man, we went our own gear on everything. Anytime we appear, we are on getting. I was missing it. I had started with the He Man conference, all the stuff I was doing. I had gotten away from it, and I was wearing, you know, just like hey, Polo, Nike, all that stuff. I see you see your gear under there, and yeah, I man. love your brand anyway. Because anybody that know you know you're a branded man. You know how you, you shut it down. Audio visual is your thing. So it's like, and even going back to these, when I look at these three squares, each of us have our three dimensions that we flow in. Because I remember we'd be on the call, man. You were always flowing in that creative. Anything, audio, hosting, whatever, Kelly generating, idea marketing. I ain't met hands down anybody marketing that can touch my bro. And, you know, one of the things I really pride myself in and honored to have is that voice of speaking, you yeah. know, and just that, you know, and writing. And so I, I was like, hey, let's go. And so we have our design team and the same guy to design our stuff. He kind of went and did it. And I was like, man, let's get everything fitted. So from the mug to the hat to the shirt, I'm always here. I'm here. I'm out here, baby. I see you. So that's what so, it is. So here's the thing to what you just said, right? I have to think this guy, <laughs> mm-hmm. this guy for this, uh, not this particular shirt, but this concept. Yeah. Kelly told me, I called him up one day, man. I was distraught. I was in a place where I didn't know how to move forward. And you know, when yeah. you come from having achieved a certain level of success, like I said, you know, uh, for, for many years, I was booked and busy all the time. Mm-hmm. And so these last couple of years being at a standstill, like, eh, what do I do next, man? What do I do now? And I remember calling Kelly and it's like, Kelly, bro, I just, I need some help, man. And he was like, hey, man, what you got? <laughs> I was like, well, what should I do? He's like, first of all, products, man. You ain't got no products. I was like, what you mean? Man, you should do shirts, signature shirt. And anytime I design something new or get something new, I send it to Kelly. He always send me the emojis. Is it going to be fire or it's going to be like, eh, no. Nah. Yeah, so that, yeah. That's the mark of a true friend. They're not co-signing right. your BS just because you think it's good. You, they're like, nah, man, that sucks, dude. You know, like, uh-uh, man, that ain't it, right? And that's what I love about, about Kelly, man, when it comes to, you're right, marking hands down, nobody can beat him. Anytime somebody contacted me about something, I'd be like, hit up Kelly Cole, man. He's your guy, right? Because I already know Kelly is going to, you know, Kelly taught me a valuable lesson about books, writing books, right? Uh, Kelly put this book out. Was it was it uh, Conversation with Sharks? Yep. And <laughs> Kelly, was, Kelly had this thing was like, hey, while you talking about it, I already got it out. I don't care about it, it having errors or whatever. It's a book. It's out and people yeah. are buying it, right? Yeah. And I was like, wow, you, this guy don't care about quality. It wasn't that. Kelly's just like, what I'm not going to do is waste time with stuff, minute trivial things. I'm getting stuff done. You know what I'm saying? And so I love that attitude. And and Kelly, what would you say have been one of the things that you, you've you matured in over the years when it comes to how you do business? Uh, what I've matured in is like I still live by the phrase of you don't have to get it right. You just got to get it going. But I do try to do it in excellence first, but I'm still not going to waste no time. When I released that book, Conversations with Sharks, I had a bad editor. So it had a lot of mistakes in it. So what I told, you know, I put it in the book. I said, hey, while other authors are waiting for their book to be perfect, you're reading mine. Ah. And I've, I've lived by that. But so I, I do better in you know, putting my best foot forward. But if there is a mistake, like Ty tell me on a piece of content I put on social media, hey, bro, this is misspelled or this is there. I'm like, man, I don't give a damn about that. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's already up. I'm not taking it down. I'm not redoing it. It's up. You know what I'm saying? Pick Pick a letter. Pick a letter and insert it. Or pick a period. I don't. I don't care. Like, I don't have time <laughs> to go back and redoing the stuff. So, but yeah, so I've matured and trying my best to put my best foot forward, but I'm still not going to hold it up. You don't have to get it right. You just got to get it going. Once you get it going, you can always approve upon it. Anybody that goes by and buys Conversation with Sharks now, it is in its third um, revision. I got a new editor, and the, the, the version you get now is 100%. 
and, and, and real quick, real tell, quick people tell people about, about conversations, conversations with shots. shots. Somebody's asking, how can we follow you and find your business pages uh, for the both of you guys? Before you answer that, but Kelly, tell people about conversations with Shark because people may not know Kelly Cole did something that very few people in his position at that time when he wrote that book could possibly do. He was able to get the shots from Shark Tank to sit yes. down and hold a conversation with him. And that's how he wrote that best selling book. So tell them about that right quick, Kelly. Yeah, cool. And that's what I was gonna say. Like, so I when they introduced when ABC introduced Shark Tank, all I did was take notes from the show because I just fell in love with the show. One of my friends found out about my notes and asked, Can they borrow my notes? And he's like, Yo, this will make a great book. And you should interview the sharks. And I was like, man, I didn't even think about that. So I emailed all of the sharks. The only one who hit me back was Barbara Copeland and agreed to give me an interview. We hit it all so well. I was like, Barb, you'll help me get an interview with Damon. She was like, sure. She two-way me, Damon, on a three-way. She was like, Damon, get this dude an interview. He's a great guy. Damon was like, sure, Kels, hit up my assistant. Boom, set up that interview, took the interviews along with my notes. And turn it into a book that became my first number one bestseller. Now, just think about if I waited years to put that out. I wouldn't have had that number one bestseller if I waited on this and waited on that and just shuffled my feet. But I went ahead and did it, and that became my number one bestseller, man. My first one. Uh, look at it. You see, you see the correction, the time, my first one. <laughs> the first one. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so so people want to know how can they follow and find you guys' business pages. Okay, so my um, my personal page is at Mr. Kelly Cole, just like it is on the screen. But my business page is at Publishing Advantage Group, and you can get links to my my business websites and all of that. Publishing Advantage Group and Mr. Kelly Cole; those are all my pages. Same thing with my website. My website is mrkellycole.com. My business um, website is publishingadvantagegroup.com. All right, Ty, you? And for me, and for me it's, it's definitely on my, my profile at Dr. Oliver T. Reed. You put that brand new website at dralivertreed.com, Facebook, social media, Instagram, fully branded. You can find me there. All right, guys, you can find me at I am Harold Finch .com. I am Harold Finch, and I am Harold Finch on all social media uh platform so uh listen guys i can have this conversation with you guys literally sure. all night long uh but we ain't got that kind of time uh, so <laughs> so uh my last question is what is the one thing that you guys have uh loved and enjoyed about our friendship um for me I mean, we talked about it at the beginning, man, just being able to be real and be myself and not be judged for my thought process, my opinions, and me being vulnerable as a man. So it's very few men that I've been had relationships with where I can genuinely say, man, I love you, bro, and not feel weird, or they have to say pause. No, I ain't got to say pause. You're my brother. I love you. You know what I'm saying? You need something. I got you. And, you know, like we're all of y'all, we've cried on the phone together. Yeah. And I ain't never felt no different kind of way. So I've enjoyed being able to have two brothers that I can be at any level of, you know, emotional or however I'm feeling, I can share with you guys. And I've enjoyed, you know, the reciprocation in the relationship. That's for me. All right. Go. For me, it's the, it's the part that, that's really powerful for me is that I never stop. I never got too familiar with you guys. But what I mean by that is I'm comfortable enough to let all of my guts, like if literally I was going down, y'all would have the evidence to be like, we're going to bring them all the way down. Like, but at the end of the day, I never stopped admiring you guys. I never got so comfortable that I didn't see the greatness within you. And even though I haven't talked to you more, I follow what, I see what you can do. You know, I see you at big events, national events, you out corporate sponsoring, you out hosting shows. I'm on the kill. I like, I saw Mo do this, I saw Mo do that. And it's never been from a standpoint of, of oh, that's just whatever. But from a standpoint, I always admire y'all genius as a king. And I look at y'all as kings too, because I'm a king too. So my biggest thing about that is that's what I love about the relationship. Y'all keep growing. Y'all always doing something. You know, y'all always still challenging me to be better. And at the same time, looking at my weaknesses and frailties and be like, yo, because Kelly can tell you, like, we've been trying, like, I'll do the dumbest stuff sometimes. We trip out. 
like I do the dumbest stuff, but most people can't even see that because they see the other part. But we see all the crazy stuff that's like, you just did that? Like, we trip out. Because I feel like when hanging with y'all, y'all going to say something crazy. Uh, like, this going to make me just be like, what? Every time we go out. So I think about that, man. So I'm looking forward to traveling the world, doing what we got to do together, man. And it's been that way for 2010, 96 with you. We came a long way since 96, bro. We done came yeah. a long way, so just celebrating that. We done came a long way since 2010. I mean, when you think yeah. about it, we done, we got a winning team. So it's, yeah. it's all about, you yeah. know, just continue to admire that genius in each of us, man. Yeah. Uh, the thing I've, I've loved and enjoyed about our friendship is our growth and maturity over the years. You know, um, mm-hmm. to see, like you say, Ty, going back to 96 when me and you met, oh, my God, we've come such a long way. Uh, since, <laughs> being some, some, some young uh, young guys who, who was just looking at life from a whole different uh, pair of lens um, being able to count on people who you can share everything with you know like it's nothing I don't think I can't tell you guys and like Kelly said and I, I'm, I know I'm not going to be judged hell that was the time here, well, early last year, I text Kelly like, "Hey, man, I need some money for food to eat." And this nigga was like, "I got you." You know, it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. being that kind of person uh, and, and having those types of friends. When I, well, what you needed for, man? Wait, wait, you know, what you been doing with your money? You know, you don't have to right. worry about that. And that's why I say right. I miss those calls that we had every week uh, for that time period because it wasn't about us dumping stuff on each other, but it was about us hearing from each other uplifting mm-hmm. one another and learning from one another and that's been the thing watching you guys uh tie you from afar at, at times and and kelly up, up close and personal just learning like man looking at where we were when we encountered one another and where we are today it's just been it's been breathtaking for me you know because i love each and every uh, individuality about you guys like Kelly and, and Ty are not the same people you know they're not the same friend you know they're not going to be the same mm-hmm. type of friend you know and so having different experiences but being able to experience things together it, it's been a joy what what I would love to do and I'm putting this out here right now I would love to start doing more things with you guys uh, business wise though Most you know good. I think I yeah. think that's kind of like and I, I'm going to say this you guys let me know I feel like I've been alienated in a sense, not from not on purpose, but because of it, it could be distance. It could be in a sense. It could be, hey, well, he's here. So he ain't going to want to do this or he's here. But I feel like I want to be a part of this next tier of you guys' lives when it comes to business and what you guys do. Mm-hmm. And I want us to do things together. Uh, th- that had to be everything. But I want to do some things together with the two of you guys because you guys are my friends and I feel like I can trust you. Most of that, bro. Yeah, man. Now, now, and, and Kelly, you you responsible for that? Always, I'm always the responsible <laughs> one. Yeah, because you be you be putting stuff together. So yeah, you, you know, you know me. Yeah, yeah, he put stuff together. So Kelly, sure. when, when you when you putting stuff together, hey, let's 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 include Big Brother in this. You know, for I sure. feel like the brother who went away to the army and then I came back and y'all niggas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it, man. We, yeah, we got to crush it. We got to do some things. I'm, I'm putting it out there right now, man. We got to do some real estate and everything, bro. Cool, Let's cool. Do it. Well, man, I, I certainly appreciate. Like, this has really been an honor for me to have you guys on my show, um, and have this conversation, man. This was wonderful for me. I'm so ecstatic about this. And this show. Had- Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Thanks for joining us where it always feels good.